Dave, so I think, you know, now we're starting to see the effect of the rise in interest rates from zero to five. And then after Silicon Valley Bank, where some banks don't want to extend the line of credit for uh, private funds to bridge the capital costs. And, uh, and we recently, in fact, you know, so one credit fund that came and said that the bank does not want to continue providing a credit. So the natural, the natural thinking that that uh, that comes to mind is, what is that going to uh, have an effect on the performance of private funds? And the question is really is twofold. There is the money that's already on the ground, and then there is the money that is going to be to be deployed. Right. Right. So, so how? Uh, so how 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 would you how would you uh, look at that in terms of really at the end of the day the effect on IRR and on multiples if any? Right. Well, there's no doubt. Starting a year ago or a bit more, as central banks began to raise rates, that the credit cycle has turned globally and um, commensurate with inflation and central banks needing to fight inflation. And there's a whole bunch of ripple effects that occur. Um, Silicon Valley Bank situation with uh, some mid-sized banks in the U.S. is an example of that. And, and it is and will have a ripple effect through the investment, you know, various asset classes in the investment world. Um, you mentioned, you know, base rates go into five, that alone, because that base rate, that U.S. Treasury rate anchors returns up and down the stack of different asset classes, that has a big impact. Um, but with respect to private equity, uh, often things that you read about in the paper and the general sort of uh, conventional wisdom on them um, tend to be different or the opposite. So it is true, larger buyouts rely on leverage and the more uh, the the more available that leverage is, and the lower that it's priced, the better for those that l large bout um, strategy. Um, and that's and, and so the fact that uh, leverage is less available or not available, and or higher costs costs more will impact the returns and the ability of those deals to get done. On the other hand, private equity is a huge area and many, if not most of the strategies that we look to at the lower end uh, don't employ any leverage at all or very little. They don't rely on it. And so the impact, the positive impact of investing in underlying portfolio companies during times that are choppy, meaning they're able to buy those businesses more cheaply and they're buying businesses that aren't, that are in troughs or down cycles in their level of EBITDA has a much higher impact and a positive one on the ultimate returns of those strategies, those businesses, then the availability of leverage and the cost of that leverage. Uh, just this week, we're looking at two managers and they basically invest in businesses that might be worth, you know, 20 to 50 to $100 million. And they might have EBITDA levels that are you know, low single digits, leverage even before wasn't available for businesses like that. So they're able to buy at lower multiples. Um, let's say they can buy it at six times instead of eight or eight times instead of 10. And then the level of EBITDA that they're buying at is lower and they'll own that business for five or seven or eight years and pick a better time to sell when they've done things with that business. That has a significantly better impact on the outcome of the, those deals than the fact that uh, leverage that they wouldn't have used in many of those cases, at least initially for those businesses. And so these, the, you know, the data is, uh, there's a robust data set that shows that investments made during rocky times um, and funds raised during rocky times and deployed during them have considerably higher uh, ultimate returns than the opposite. In fact, they tend to average sort of 500 to 800 basis points per year 
um, of, a, of a tailwind, higher returns, whether you're a median investor or a top quartile or, or a top decile. So that's that's basically the impact of the current climate on private equity. Has a big impact on, on larger deals um, and relatively, you know, a lot less impact on on smaller deals. The smaller you go, the less impact it has, and it's positive. Generally, times like this, like like these, are positive for small to medium size um, strategies in private equity. And what about the use of uh, lines of credit to to make capital calls? Right, and so. Uh, uh, credit lines secured by the commitments of limited partners in these limited partnership agreements are something that over the last five to eight years have been deployed um, quite effectively. You know, uh, you they enhance returns um, by they can enhance returns by you know four or five hundred basis points um, net returns on the fund. Um, there, uh, so yes, that would have an impact. Let's say, um, you know, but you're, you're basically taking a fund that might have a net return of 17, 18% and enhancing it in a way that would get it up to 22, 23%. That's, that's, re that's real. Um, it's not hugely impact on the, uh, impactful on the multiple that you're going to get out of the fund. Um, the the higher the return um, of of a strategy, the more the it, the lack of uh, these lines of of credit um, are will have on that return. Meaning, your friends, the the, the credit people, credit strategies might have uh, return profiles in the sort of high single digits to low double digit range, and so leverage isn't going to have as much impact on that as it will on a private equity strategy that might be aiming plus or minus for a 20% return. So yeah, the fact that um, lines of credit now might cost seven, 8%, not you know 5% and um, be less available would have a bit of an impact on uh, that's, that part of the strategy. And do you and and do you think that the as you said this this strategy of borrowing against commitment has only been around for the past uh, uh, five to eight years? So and 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 you could understand why because of the zero interest rates. So do you think now if we remain in that interest rate environment that this facility will no longer make sense for the borrower, or is it because the lender is now conservative that does not want to provide that? Yeah, it's a little of both. Um, naturally, you know, banks are risk averse entities in general, right? So when things get choppy, they pull back. Uh, some of these anecdotes being told have something to do with the frontline lenders were Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank, these niche banks that, uh, had a large percentage of their business anchored in the investment world. Those have been acquired by, you know, new larger entities, JP Morgan and First Citizens that aren't as familiar with this sort of lending. It, it'll it'll come back. It's you know those uh, you know the credit. Pr if you have a private equity fund um, that is being lent to. And the providers of that capital are, you know, State of New York, CalPERS, the Stanford Endowment, what have you. The creditworthiness of that vehicle, these are the lines of credit are secured by the commit the legal commitments of those established providers. That's a that's a low risk um, area to lend. You're not lending to an individual who's buying a house or or building a, an apartment or an office. And so, you know, my, my sense is, and these are short duration loans, and they're only for a small portion of those legal commitments. So my guess is that they, you know, other banks or those banks um, 
find a way to lend the the cost of that capital would be will be higher than it was you know a year ago um and they'll because of the cost is higher they'll be used a bit less i mean the system adjusts makes adjustments on both sides tends to make adjustments on both sides and if we switch to a venture i know venture doesn't use leverage but is there any uh, side effects from that environment other than making capital expensive, which means that the provider of capital gets to get a better deal. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are less, uh, it, lending finds its way less directly into, you know, the, um, uh, the, the uh, investors of that capital. I think what, what, what we're seeing in venture is many companies, startups, um, particularly ones that kind of get past the seed early stage uh, of their existence, rely on um, uh, venture lending. You know, there's a number of providers. Many of the largest ones were anchored by banks. Um, and it basically provides some of the capital for growth between the, the, the venture capital lenders um, and sort of, uh, you know, kind of simple bank borrowing. And, uh, you know, there's less of that available. Um, and as a result, the only, you know, basically what's happening is these businesses are being much more frugal. They're, they're pulling back. They're lowering their burn rates. They're trying to stretch out the amount of time between rounds of financing. Nobody wants to raise uh, capital in this current climate at a down round. Um, traditionally, they rely on, um, you know, venture debt lending, uh, which is a much higher cost of capital than uh, the lending we were talking about earlier to private equity firms. And, you know, there's a scarcity of that capital as well, um, which is, you know, impacts, you know, I'd say as the venture, as the venture investor, um, their capital is more precious and likely to drive a higher return. And again, the data suggests that during choppy, choppy times like these, like we saw in 08, 09, like we saw for several years in 2000 to 2003, 2004, the returns of investments made during those periods that are exited in later periods that are more buoyant uh, end up being end up doing better than than the reverse. Uh, the reverse meaning investments made when times were frothy, when prices were high, where, where spending by the by the companies was more robust, sloppy, I guess you could say. Um, so we're definitely in one of those windows where capital is precious and scarce. Um, entrepreneurs have to be much more frugal than they did 18 months ago. Thank you, uh, Dave. That's, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's uh, helpful. I think the, the, uh, uh, the competition for capital, as you said, you know, the pricing of cash from zero to five uh, makes it challenging for the money on the ground. What makes it more interesting for the new money to be, to be uh, deployed. So, that's, that's that's exactly right. If if you have a a business that um, you know has been has been around for a while, uh, got used to the availability of capital, so they could be less tight with their budget, their, their hiring, et cetera. Um, you know that the, the the later rounds done over the last couple of years are not likely to do nearly as well as fresh capital that you know, has, is going in now or likely over the next, you know, time will tell, but it could be a longer environment for that. That would be a good thing for, for investors that are looking to build exposure and portfolios starting now, looking forward over the next couple of years.